All right, everyone, welcome back to the garage and welcome back to another day of color sanding, buffing, and polishing. This is the other door that we didn't get to yesterday. There is yesterday's uh, progress report and it's looking pretty good. As mentioned in the video yesterday, it still has a few small scratches in there that need to be refined out, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. It looks uh, much better than the non-sanded panel, let's just say that. So we are about to go through the, uh, the same process as we did yesterday. I did pick up some new uh, microfiber towels today. So those are not going to introduce any extra grit into the panel. I think that was part of the problem is some of the microfibers I had, I'd been sort of reusing and washing and they may have had a little bit of grit in them. So got new uh, microfibers that we'll use strictly to uh, wipe these panels down and get the excess compound and polish off. So. Let's start the process. We'll start soaking our sandpaper again, starting with 1500 grit, working down to uh, 2500. I did actually pick up a 3000 grit Trizac disc today, uh, just one of them, just to try it out. Um, I do not have a uh, soft interface pad for my um, my sander. This one is a bit of a got a little bit of a foam backing on it. We may give it a shot and just be careful. These are extremely expensive, these things. This was $10 for one sanding pad. So if this does work for me and I, I think it's a, a value added, I may actually order, uh, go ahead and order some from Amazon where they'll be a little bit cheaper along with the actual uh, interface pad. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll uh, get to work and we'll back uh, once we make some progress on this panel. Again, I showed you uh, what this looks looked like at the end of yesterday's video. And to be honest with you, it may have some more dirt nibs than the other panel had, but it does not have, uh, from what I can see, it doesn't have those, you know, those my friends as I called them yesterday in yesterday's videos, the little craters um, that I thought might have been caused by some water spitting out of the gun. I only have one little one here, and it's not very deep, but I don't really see any else, anything else that looks like that on this panel. So it might, might be mostly dirt nibs that are easy enough to get out. So let's see how this uh, panel polishes up. I suspect it might polish better than the other panel. All right, we guys, go. we've got that panel now sanded down to 3000 grit. Uh, we used the uh, little Trizac 3000 grit uh, foam pad on the back of my uh, dual action sander. And uh, although I don't have the interface pad, this. Uh, pad that's on here is fairly soft anyway, plus the Trizac pad has a very thin foam backing. So anyway, that looks uh, pretty nice at this point. So we're going to go ahead and pull out the uh, polishers and see what we can do to bring this back up. All right, guys, the uh, top side of the door is now done and looking pretty good. So pretty good shine. Uh, most of the scratches are gone. A little sort of little pigtail line over here somewhere you can kind of see every now and then but pretty good shine now I'm gonna have to admit something back to the rotary so I'm doing a combination now of the rotary and the uh, random orbit and that seems to work pretty well the thing with the uh, the rotary is you got to be very careful on the edges that you don't don't burn through the paint and that's why I was kind of interested in getting into the random orbit as you don't have that problem it's much easier and uh, user friendly but I just don't seem to be able to get the results out of the uh, random orbit than I do out of the rotary so I think what we'll end up doing in the future is probably doing a combination of the two and uh, I can sort of stay away from the edges and use the uh, the random orbit to do the edges and I can use the rotary to do the sort of the center of the panel and that seems to be kind of the both of both of the best of both worlds so that's looking pretty good pretty shiny so we're going to do the uh, top side and finish this panel off and then we'll move on to uh, something else all right guys so we've uh, gone as far as we're going to go uh, as far as the doors are concerned at the moment like I'd mentioned once these are on the car we may go back and have another quick look at them and have another quick uh, buff or polish we will see but they aren't too too bad right now anyway we've decided to move on to the other remaining panels of the car starting with the rear fenders first of the four fenders I believe this one might be the best of the four fenders I'm not quite sure the other rear fender was pretty good as well 
this one looks pretty good. Uh, it does have a slight run, and it's really hard to see it actually. Uh, you can probably see it under certain lights, and again, I don't know whether the camera will pick it up or not, but it's just in this area here, there's a bit of a ripple. And we're going to work on getting that out first. It may sand out with normal uh, 1500 grit. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go with 1000 grit on a flat paint stick and we're going to concentrate on that area first, being careful not to go too, too far. But we'll give a, a head start with 1000 grit before we drop down to a 1500. And like I said, we're going to get a flat paint stick, short section, and just wrap the paper around the, uh, the paint stick and we'll concentrate on that little wave first and then we'll start with our regular process on the rest of the panel. So as a quick overview, again, it doesn't look too bad. Just a little bit of uh, orange peelness in the uh, clear coat. Um, there is a little bit of trash here and there, but not bad. So I think it's sprayed out pretty well. There's a little piece of dirt here, just uh, or a bug or something on the lip of this fender. But for the most part, it's sprayed out pretty well. Not a lot of trash down in this area, a little bit, but it's looking pretty good. That is about the only run I can find is that area there. So, and like I said, it's it's minor. You kind of really have to look for it, but the rest of the panel looks pretty good. So, anyway, we're going to, uh, like I said, we'll start about the thousand grit, knocking down that uh, that little run, and then we will move on from there. There's your before and we'll come back with the after, after. a bit of a start on this uh, rear fender yesterday. Uh, we've got it sanded down to 15 grit and uh, 1500 grit and looking pretty good. So we're going to move on to the next step. We're going to move up to the 2000 grit and give this another sand before we proceed to the 2500 and then finish with a quick uh, 3000 on the uh, DA. Getting closer to bringing out the machines. All right, guys, quick update for you on the uh, rear fender. It is now sanded down to 3000 grit, washed down, and we've just got it drying out here in the sun. We're just uh, waiting to start the next uh, process and bring the machines out. And that's where these random orbit machines kind of come into their own. It's a difficult panel to buff, as you can imagine, and with a rotary buffer, you can really do quite a bit of damage on some of these little angles and curves. So the rotary buffers are much safer on this style of panel, so we're looking forward to using them on this panel. Um, I've had a couple of questions uh, regarding the interior finish of the fenders, and uh, I am going to be doing them with a uh, truck bed liner, probably Raptor liner, like I did the exterior body tub. I have some Raptor liner left, I believe. I think I've got two bottles. That should be sufficient to do the four interiors of the fenders. Yeah, I do. So there's the Raptor liner there. And uh, so that's what's going to happen on the interior of the fenders. They have been epoxy primed and primed on the inside, so we'll have to scuff them down with a uh, scotch bright before we go to the Raptor liner. We're not going to do a spray on, we're just going to do a brush and roller. Um, that seems to work well for me, so I won't have to worry about getting overspray on my exterior of the panels. We'll just tape off the openings that we need to. Of course, you can do it the other way around. You can spray the Raptor liner first and then do your color coats, but I find that. Uh, you know, unless you mask off the interior of the panel, you're going to get a bunch of overspray, so I prefer to do it at the end versus doing it at the beginning. But your choice, you can do it either way. Another question I've uh, 
been asked on today's or yesterday's video was about nib files and I actually have two nib files here and these are for taking out runs so these are uh, I've got a fine and a coarse nib file so there's the coarse there is the fine so uh, I've tried these on my 60 TR3 uh, project and they do work um, we are going to try a couple of different processes on the uh, larger runs on the front fenders we'll try the nib files we're going to try the razor blade trick. Um, there's a bunch of different ways. Obviously, the thousand grit on the uh, on the paint stick works for me as well. I've also done a process where I've laid body filler on either side of the run just to protect the uh, exteriors or the outsides of the run to make sure you're not sanding too deeply and taking off that clear when you don't need to. So, I've done a bunch of different processes in the past. I haven't really done the razor blade process because it scares me a little bit. In this case, with the runs that are fairly heavy on the front fenders, I may resort to using a razor blade. We'll have, uh, we'll see. We'll see what we do. We'll do whatever technique works for us um, to get the job done. So, there's a couple questions answered on the uh, previous uh, videos. All right, on to uh, buffing and polishing. I just wanted to give you a quick update on that run area as well after it's sanded. And I don't know if you can see, but there is no more run. So uh, that's looking good. That should buff up nicely. I had actually a little bit of a run down here too that I fixed. So that is gone. So uh, let the uh, machines take care of the rest. And uh, we'll see how this comes up in the end. All right. All right. Fender's coming back up nicely. Uh, this is after the first uh, compounding session. Obviously, we haven't done the top side yet. But the uh, flat parts, bottom, and the arches are done. This panel again will be uh, would be much easier to do once it's on the car and we will do it again once it's on the car. We'll give it a quick pass over probably with like a sealer uh, coat and uh, but it's looking pretty good so far. Again that run area is looking really good much much better than it did. So we'll uh, continue on uh, doing the top side. I can tell you that this little uh, G8 mini random orbital polisher is working wonders on this type of panel to get into all these uh, tight areas so I highly recommend it for this type of work for sure so so far I've only used the rotaries I haven't used the I'm sorry the uh, random orbit I haven't used the rotary here and this is looking pretty good I don't see any scratches so maybe I'm getting a little bit better as far as my technique is concerned or maybe I'm getting a little less picky I don't know anyway let's finish this panel off and uh, so we'll finish the compounding uh, of the top side and then we'll go to the final polish and see what this uh, rear fender looks like in the end. So far right, so guys, good. another panel completed and uh, here is the finished panel and I brought the unfinished panel out for comparison. Here's the unfinished panel. You can definitely see the texture in the clear coat, sort of an orange peely texture because it hasn't been flattened yet, versus this one over here, which has been. Again, I'm going to do another final uh, polish once this is on the car. It's looking pretty good for a start. So we should be able to get this one hopefully finished up by the end of the day today and then we can move on to the uh, the front fenders but that's looking pretty good I'm happy with that polished up quite nicely at the front here as you can probably see and here's the one yet to be done Uh, look at this little spider just uh, just hanging in there. Those are the guys that uh, like to come out while I'm painting and drop in to say hello. All right, let's move on to uh, finishing another panel.
All right, onto the uh, driver's side rear fender, and uh, this fender is not too, too bad. Again, it's got a bit of a run in the same location as the other uh, panel we just completed. This one's a little more severe, I would say. Let's see if you can pick it up in the camera. Let's see light on the subject here. If you can just see a little bit of a run right in that area there. We'll come around and what a different angle. It's a little difficult to make it out, but uh, definitely a bit of a run there. So again, we're going to start with a thousand grit on the. Uh, what I'm using is a carpenter's pencil, which is a flat side and rounded edges, and that seems to work pretty well for me. So, we'll get started with that area first, and then we'll move on. Once we remove that defect, we'll move on to another area and drop down to the, uh, or move up to the 1500 grit. All right, I'm going to try to put the panel back in the exact same area or close to the same area so you can see a difference in the clarity of the overhead light. So here is that light now, and it definitely looks uh, a little pebbly, not extremely clear. At least that's what's showing in the uh, viewfinder. So uh, let's see what we can make that look like after the sanding and buffing. All right guys, second rear fender is now done. We're gonna call it done for now. And I promise to give you that shot of the light above in the relatively same position. And that's looking pretty good. A few tiny scratches to, uh, to get out, but not bad. That's pretty scary, isn't it? How about my run? Well, I can sort of still see it because I knew where it was, but it is 75, 80% better. I'm probably still might be able to see it a little bit. I don't think if you uh, didn't know it was there originally, I don't think you'd be able to pick that up. Again, once I get it on the car, if it's going to bug me, I'm going to uh, re-sand it and uh, do that area, but I think it looks pretty good. Front part buffed up nicely. All right, another panel done. So um, I guess we'll move on to the front fenders next, and those will definitely be more fun and more challenging. But I'm up for a challenge, so we'll... Uh, get there later on today. All right guys, now on to the harder part. We're going to work on the uh, front fenders. This is the uh, driver's side front fender and uh, as mentioned, we've got a pretty good run or runs happening on this panel. In this area here, we wander around to the other side. All right, so probably see the runs there hopefully pretty heavy and we also have a run up in this area here that goes towards the front fender similar to the, the run that we just fixed on the rear fender so I'm obviously more concerned about these runs here because they're quite large and we're going to try a different uh, technique on these runs initially you we'll see them there that's yeah, probably pretty good there. You can see that. And you can probably see that. So we're going to do our best to uh, to get these out. You can see a little bit up here on the edge as well. And the rest of the panel is okay. So uh, we're going to concentrate on this area first and see what we can do. So they were tried the razor blade technique before to. Uh, start scratching runs out. As mentioned, I've got a nib file that we're going to also probably utilize. Um, but uh, I'm kind of eager to learn the razor blade method, so I've done some uh, reading and research on that. And uh, we'll start that action when we come back.
All right, let's see if we can uh, do a little bit of learning together. Again, I've not done this before with a razor blade technique, but uh, we're going to learn to do it, or we're going to fail doing it, but at least we'll have tried. Failure means uh, a repaint of the panel, so we don't really want to go there. <laughs> so we're going to be extremely careful, and we're going to take our time. So I do have uh, brand new razor blades. And uh, I've done a bit of a safety on this. So what guys are saying is obviously you don't want to catch the edge of the blade anywhere other than the run. So you're going to try to scrape this across directly across the top of the run to flatten it. So I've just taped the edges so as not to sort of dip and grab at the clear coat on either side of the run. The other option is to, uh, I think you can bend the edges of the blade up um, to uh, make sure it doesn't dig in. Uh, we've gone with the uh, tape initially anyway. We're going to try this first and uh, we'll see how this works. Again, this is going to be a trial and error. Well, hopefully trial, no error. So we'll just take it slow. And the objective is obviously to bring that run down to level with the uh, rest of the clear coat and then we can continue on with our sanding process with the paper. So here we go. And the only problem is my tape is preventing it from hitting where I need it to hit. Same over here. So I think we might have to go with the other process, which will be to uh, bend. Yeah, let me see if I can. Oh. Gonna have to go with the bending the blade because the tape is a little bit too thick. So we'll be back after we make some adjustments to our blade. The razor blades do not bend they shatter so I guess we're gonna go um, full blade and just be really careful so I've outlined the scratch a little bit with my nib file you can see the scratch that I'm going after so I'll try the blade on that run is in kind of a weird spot. It um, sort of slopes down to the uh, opening for the vents and uh, it's preventing me from getting a good you know straight level edge on top of the run. I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to go old school and just go with the, uh, the small um, sanding block paint stick and a thousand grit and see how we do that way. I'm more comfortable with that anyway so let me go with that approach and see how I can do getting that out with the old uh, thousand grit. All right, this is not gonna be very exciting.
I'm going to take you off the tripod so you can have a bit of a closer look. You can actually see two high areas, which are the shiny bits. See them right there? That's what I'm trying to work out. I'm not going to keep you here, but that's the process. We'll just keep sanding until we don't see any uh, or feel any more lines there in the clear coat and everything is level without going through the clear coat layer into the blue. If we see blue coming out in our uh, water, then that, that's a bad thing. I think you can see a pretty good outline now where that run is in the panel. And uh, those are obviously the areas I'm trying to sand down. So we'll concentrate on those two bright blue outlines. You can sort of see them running along and down and up. So we're concentrating on those particular lines and trying not to go too far outside the lines. Um, obviously we have sanded part of the panel down. That was where the rest of the run is. You can actually see the run coming up here. So I was trying to flatten that down a little bit as well. So anyway, we'll try to concentrate on the lines in the run and make see if we can make those better. All right, here's where we're at in that area. Um, I don't think you can see any remnants of where that run was now. So we're still at a thousand grit. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an area just up at the top here a little bit just to clean this area up and maybe just in here. And then uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just play around a little bit. We'll go through the steps of sanding in this area. So we'll go 1500, 2000, 2500. Then we'll bring the buffer out just to see what it looks like once, it bu once it's buffed to uh, show us that we've got it out to our satisfaction. So we'll just keep concentrating on this little area here. And there's a little bit better look of the uh, other run I was talking about just here along the top. Fortunately, it's not too deep. Um, so we're kind of working our way across that as well. And then we'll move on to another area. Sooner or later, we'll get all the runs out. All right, guys, let's take a look where that uh, run was, and you tell me whether you can still see it or not. I think it looks pretty good. Again, this is just a kind of a rough sand and finish. There's actually some scratches in it. I'm not too worried about that at the moment because I'm going to go back. It's actually a couple of really big scratches back in here. I remember that run was in this area. So I think that's looking pretty good. Don't think you can see any remnants of that run. And remember this big run down here, I think that looks pretty darn good as well. For an initial uh, try at it, again we'll refine it a bit more. Tomorrow when we get back out here, and we're going to sand this area back down again anyway, and uh, bring it back up. We'll start back at 1500, get rid of some of these heavy sanding scratches, and then we'll uh, finish this off again down to 2500 and we'll rebuff the entire panel but I just wanted to see whether I could get those runs out effectively or not and it seems that we have so we're happy about that anyway we'll get back out here tomorrow after work and uh, hopefully finish off this panel tomorrow night and then we'll uh, get a start on the other front fender um, probably after work on Saturday so Thanks for watching guys, thanks for commenting, and thanks for subscribing. We will see you tomorrow.